guys, in today's video we'll talk a little bit about hormones. To be specific, all the hormones that we talk about in this video have to do with the digestive system. So I've listed up here before the name of the hormone, where it comes from or the source, the stimulus or what causes this hormone to be released, as well as the role. So what does this hormone cause? What are the results of this hormone being secreted into the bloodstream? And I'll put a title up here too for hormones. The first hormone that we'll talk about is one called gastrin. So gastrin, like you might know, sounds a little bit like gastric, which makes a lot of sense because gastrin comes from the stomach. In order for gastrin to be released, food must enter the stomach. So as you may remember from a previous video about the alimentary canal, we have the bolus moving from the pharynx into the esophagus and then into the stomach. As soon as the bolus enters the stomach, the hormone gastrin will be released by the stomach. Gastrin actually has two functions. The first function of gastrin is that it stimulates the release of gastric juice. The second function of gastrin is that it stimulates the stomach to empty. So to recap, gastrin is a hormone from the stomach. It is secreted by the stomach as soon as food or a bolus enters the stomach. And what it does is it stimulates the release of gastric juice as well as promoting the stomach to empty itself. The next hormone, also with the exact same source and the same stimulus, is histamine. Histamine also comes from the stomach and is stimulated when food enters the stomach. Histamine has a different role from gastrin. Again, all hormones have their own specific roles in the body. What histamine does is it stimulates cells to release hydrochloric acid. The particular cell that it stimulates is known as a parietal cell. So as soon as food enters the stomach, the stomach will release histamine as well as gastrin, but histamine will be telling the parietal cells to secrete HCL. As you might remember from a previous video, HCL is extremely important because it provides the acidity required to dissolve certain foods in the stomach for chemical digestion, as well as stimulating pepsinogen to convert into the active form, which is pepsin. So the first two hormones that we discussed are found in the stomach and are released when food enters the stomach. We're going to talk about three more and these are no longer found in the stomach. So we've moved past the stomach and now we're into the small intestine. More specifically, we're in the first third of the small intestine known as the duodenum. So the next three hormones will be found in the duodenum and are stimulated when acid chyme enters the duodenum. We have to remember that food becomes a bolus which enters the stomach, stimulating gastrin and histamine. And then eventually we have the pyloric sphincter, which is a valve that will release the acid chyme into the duodenum. As soon as the pyloric sphincter opens up and secretes the acid chyme into the duodenum, the duodenum will then release three hormones. These three hormones are secretin, CCK, and GIP. Again, we're completely done with the stomach now. We've moved on to the small intestine, or more specifically, the duodenum. These three hormones are from the duodenum and are only released as soon as acid chyme from the stomach moves into the duodenum. Secretin, as you can kind of see in the name, is responsible for secreting. And what exactly does it secrete? Secretin increases the secretion of pancreatic juice as well as the liver's output of bile. So what does secretin do? Secretin is responsible for increasing the amount of pancreatic juice being released. As you may remember, we can find a lot of enzymes within pancreatic juice. For example, trypsin, chymotrypsin, lipase. We can find peptidase, carboxypeptidase, as well as pancreatic amylase. So there's a whole plethora of enzymes within the pancreas, all within the pancreatic juice. As soon as chyme enters the duodenum, this pancreatic juice will be increased from the pancreas into the duodenum. 
This will allow the food to better be digested by the enzymes. As well, secretin tells the liver to release the bile. As you may know, bile can be found in two places, the liver, which makes the bile, as well as the gallbladder, which is responsible for bile storage. In this case, secretin increases bile specifically from the liver. CCK, on the other hand, increases the amount of bile from the gallbladder. It also will increase the amount of pancreatic juice. So I'll make a note of that here. It increases the amount of pancreatic juice and it increases bile specifically from the gallbladder. I know that's a little bit messy, but secretin is responsible for bile from the liver and CCK for releasing bile stored in the gallbladder. And both of these are responsible for increasing the amount of pancreatic secretions coming from the pancreas and moving into the duodenum. The last one, GIP, stands for gastric inhibitory peptide. If you think about the name a little bit, gastric inhibitory peptide. So what it's going to do is stop the release of gastric juice. And why do we need to stop the release of gastric juice? Why can't we just have gastric juice keep going in the stomach, keep being secreted? The reason for that is because gastric juice, as you may remember, is rich in HCL as well as other enzymes. If we keep secreting gastric juice, but the stomach is empty, these enzymes will start to break down the walls of the stomach itself, which is really not good. We don't want the stomach to start digesting its own walls. That's really bad. So what's going to happen is we need to stop the release of gastric juice because food is no longer in the stomach anyways. The bolus has moved on from the stomach, it's now in the form of chyme, and it's entered the small intestine. If the stomach is empty, there's no point in having gastric juice. There's no point in having enzymes and very acidic solutions breaking down walls of the stomach. That's why we need gastric inhibitory peptide, which will stop the release of gastric juice. You can think of GIP and gastrin working kind of antagonistically to each other. While gastrin causes gastric juice to be released, GIP will stop the release of gastric juice. The other very unique thing that GIP does is it causes insulin, another hormone, to be released. I'll write that down over here that it stimulates the release of the hormone insulin. GIP stimulates the release of insulin. As you can see, it really isn't that bad. We only have five main hormones that we look at two of them being from the stomach, and three of them being from the small intestine. They all have functions that really do make sense. Gastrin telling the stomach to release gastric juice and telling it to empty, while histamine needs to create the HCL that is responsible for activating pepsinogen into pepsin. As soon as food has left the stomach, it's now chyme, it's in the duodenum, we have three more enzymes, secretin, CCK, and GIP. At this point, it's really important to absorb the food, absorb the nutrients, digest things like carbohydrates, proteins, nucleic acids, and lipids, as well as emulsify the fat. So the emulsification is taken care of by the bile. And how does the liver know it needs to release bile? Well, secretin, the hormone, will tell the liver to release bile. How does the gallbladder know that it's time to release bile? We have CCK as the messenger, telling the gallbladder that it's time to produce bile. And both of these will increase the secretion of pancreatic juice. And finally, the hormone gastric inhibitory peptide is responsible for countering the actions of gastrin. While gastrin wants gastric juice to be released, GIP will stop it, in addition to stimulating the release of insulin, another hormone. That's pretty much it for all of our digestive hormones. I hope this video was really helpful.